I wonder what it's like. Oh, hey, I can see you're checking out my weather station. You want one? Well, let's take this one apart and show you how I made it. Okay guys, I apologize first off for the background noise. It is a Saturday and uh, wife's doing laundry. So washing machines in the basement, I'm in the basement. So here's what we did. I uh, took it off the wall. I'm gonna flip it over, go over the parts that you're gonna need to create this. And uh, then I'll show you how to do the software side of it. It's gonna be a quick tutorial of it. It won't be fully every line of code because every system's gonna be a little unique for each one of you guys, the way that you're gonna personalize it. All right, so let's get started. First off, this is a nice 3D printed frame that I did in uh, Fusion 360 I designed. It basically mimics the bezel that would have been on this screen. Now this screen is actually made up of an old laptop screen that used to be the, the wife's. Uh, it was an old Toshiba laptop, probably about 10 to 12 years old. So that's what we're going to repurpose that. And let me flip this over. And here's our minimal components, right? So our minimal components that exist of the LCD from an old laptop. This is the driver that you can go and purchase anywhere uh, online for almost any LCD screen itself. Uh, to, in order to get to find out which one you need for your screen, uh, there's a little code right here on the barcode. Don't be confused by the large, large sticker, even though this is the same number that you're going to be looking for. There's a small sticker here uh, that I always went by because sometimes they don't always have this large sticker, but this used to be a Samsung monitor that was in the Toshiba laptop. Search for that number, say this part number and uh, controller, and you're gonna be able to come up with this board. It comes with a bunch of components. Some of them come with con uh, also uh, a little display uh, adjuster, so you can turn the display on and off. You can do all your typical monitor adjustments from it, just like a regular screen that you would expect to. Uh, some of them also have uh, remote controls that you can adjust and control with. The other thing you're going to need is an, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I didn't use a Raspberry Pi on this one. I happen to have this uh, Asus Tinkerbox. It's a little bit more powerful than a Raspberry, uh, but it works exactly the same. It's still in a Python skip, uh, script that we'll be going through looking over after. And as you can see here, all I did was connect the input and output through an HDMI to HDMI mail adapter. It makes it nice and short, nice and neat. The power supply that's powering all of this is actually the Toshiba power supply as well. So if you have an old laptop, cannibalize it. I do. Um, I will go over in a later video, I'll explain my pinball machine and that's using my old uh, laptop screen as well. Now to power everything, you need to have specific vo input voltages. Luckily with this uh, Toshiba power supply, we're looking at 19 volts output and 3.4 amps, which is more than enough to drive everything that's here. You need about two amps for the uh, LCD itself, and the Adreno will take maybe an amp. So I have a buffer zone here that works more than I need. It's actually a 12.5 volt input uh, on here, but it's more than susceptible to take up to 24 volts on this particular uh, controller. Now, what I also have here is I used to do drones, and I continue to do so. Uh, the brick that I have right here is actually a power converter. Um, it actually takes my DC input of 19 volts and it has a 5 volt output that I have connected to the uh, Raspberry Pi. And then the 19 volt goes directly right into the controller board. So we're distributing the power both ways, uh, one 5 volt and one 19 volt uh, to control everything. I also have a small 5 millimeter, I mean, sorry, 5 5 volt fan that I'm actually running at 3.3 volts. This actually came off an old power supply uh, that I ended up throwing away pieces from. Um, and I have that just plugged into the 3.3 volt output of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So we have everything has proper voltage. Nothing's going to be overdrawing each other. All right, now let's, uh, let's transition from here to the software. 
a few moments later. Okay, so here we are on the computer. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we flash our S drive with the proper image uh, for the Raspberry Pi. I'm using my ticker box image uh, and be sure to select the removable drive. Don't try to select your regular drive. You will have a really, really bad day. Um, once you have that, go ahead and make sure it selects properly. In this case, it's my G drive. We're just going to say OK and flash it. All right, so here's all the magic to my mirror. Oh, that's right, magicmirror.builders. This is how I was able to get the display the way I wanted. This software is the complete background, uh, backbone to everything that we're working with. Uh, I ended up going through and reading this entire page, but I started with docs for the installation, uh, went under installation usage, not a fan of manuals, so I scrolled down to this automatic install scripts and found this GitHub page. This GitHub page had a great automatic install, which we're going to use right now. You just have to copy this and paste it in to our terminal window after we SSH. So let's get to that. So it's a good idea to know your IP address. You're going to need to go to your router to find it. I know mine, so I've typed it in here. We're going to hit continue on the screen. Uh, I'm using TerraTerm, hence why it gives you the warning. I'm going to use my default user ID and password uh, for my Tinkerboard. Paste in the script that we just copied from the website and started installing. This will take a little bit. Okay, at this point, you're going to be asked if you want to have this auto start up. That's the PM2. We're just going to say yes to this. So the next question it asks is if we want to disable a screensaver, I recommend saying yes as well. And congratulations, you've just installed Magic Mirror. And you should have some basic displays right now on your Raspberry Pi after a quick restart. Now, it's time for customization. Okay, for our conf module configuration, we're just going to head back to the Magic Mirror website and we're going to use this configuration section here to first find out where we need to uh, go to to find our config file. And you can see here they want us to create a backup right off the bat, uh, which we should all do. So uh, here are the commands in order to edit this JS file. Okay, we're going to use sudo nano and then paste in the path from the website. Now we're in the file that we can fully edit. You can go ahead and scroll through this file and you'll see that we have a few things that we want to change. For example, we're going to change the time format. If you're a fan of US time scales and Senate 24, you're going to put 12. So that's a 12 hour loop uh, instead of 24 hour time. Uh, and units, we're going to put Imperial instead of metric because you know the United States loves Imperial. Now you can see here that I already have my configuration set up for the way that I want. And I had a lot of different configurations to do. Uh, all of these got are taken place from the module websites. Uh, in particular, I have my a app ID, which is unique to me. Uh, please do not reuse this, uh, but you can just go and get yours from openweathermap.org as directed in the uh, module section. And I also found one of my customizations was MM wallpaper. Um, but I took a lot of the default ones, which are here, which is calendar monthly. Um, a dark sky radar is a custom one that I used. Uh, weather forecast was stock. Um, <clears throat> current weather was stock. I just added some more features to it to have icons. Um, same thing with the calendar. And I also added updated upcoming holidays. So there's a lot of uh, customization you can do here. You can just pick and choose which ones you want, but all those modules, you would just literally select your favorite one, uh, copy the code, paste it in, and read about which options that you want to keep for yourself. So once you're done with editing your file, you can use the control X and it'll ask you if you want to save. Um, I didn't make any changes, so it didn't ask me to. And then you'll just say yes to overwrite it. <clears throat> once you have that, your display should automatically update. If not, it's always a good idea to hit a sudo reboot while you're in the terminal. Not reboot, reboot. And that will close your terminal window and restart your display. And that's it. You guys would have now been through the entire process and created your own weather map, display board, magic beer, however you want it.
display it what you need. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment below, hit that bell. Let me know if you're enjoying this content, and I'll make some more. See you next time on I Like Beer and Stuff.